Programming digital currencies to control where you can spend. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to talk about an article from The Telegraph which is highlighting, highlighting the risks of digital currency, central bank digital currency. Now, I know all the crypto bros are, are thinking that their whole technology and cryptocurrency is a stream to a, to a freer world. I think it's quite the opposite. I think the evolution of the technology is going to be in central bank digital currencies. We're already seeing it happen in China, for one, with their new digital yuan. We're seeing Australia, we're seeing the Bank of England, the Bank of New Zealand, even the Fed in the US. All of these central banks are looking at this technology. It has the potential, it has the very scary potential to, well, restrict your spending ability. Remember, everyone here was outraged, outraged in the media at least, about the welfare cards, even though certain communities, remote communities, were asking for these welfare cards to limit the spending that people do in these communities so they're not wasting their welfare on alcohol or drugs. These are the communities asking for this. Just take that to another extreme. You've got a central bank digital currency on your phone. I don't know where my phone is. Hang on. You know, pretend my iPad's my phone. You got your central bank digital currency on your phone. You're walking around. You type a tweet. Maybe you're unhappy with the establishment. Maybe you want to donate, I don't know, to a protest completely legally. And then the government changes their mind. They're saying, sorry, you know, you have done wrong thing. Unable to access your Aussie digital money for the next four days. Think about what you've done. Sorry, you can only buy food. But as a punishment, you will pay 25% extra for all your food costs. Oh, good boy, you had the correct political opinion. Get a 5% discount the next time you go and buy your soy pills. You may think it's all facetious and it's never going to happen, Look at what's happened in the last few years around the world. How many political power brokers do you think would love to have a central bank digital currency when they could just switch it on and off to get instant compliance? Don't worry about, you know, any debate about vaccine mandates, none of that stuff. Just switch off people's ability to make any purchases or spending at the click of a button. You don't like a business? Turn it off right there. Sorry, they can't trade anymore. Hmm. Where have we heard this before? So let's look at this article, everyone. Bank of England tells ministers to intervene on digital currency programming. So the Bank of England is telling the ministers to intervene. Has called on ministers to decide whether a central bank digital currency should be programmable, ultimately giving the issuer control over how it is spent by the recipient. So that means the Bank of England with their digital pound, their digital currency they're creating, they could control it. I mean, for, you have to let's look at this from an economist perspective. If they could target economic stimulus down to the individual unit of currency to a particular location, to particular businesses or sectors, amazing. But what about the dangerous political implications? We've seen debanking. Here in Australia, we've seen it happen all over in America. We're seeing it happen now in Canada. I had a viewer even sent me sent me a photo, and I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find it. It hasn't come through. Where? Hang on, I'll do an update. Where they tried to access the ATM, and it was blocked because they'd made a donation to a protest. Let's jump over and have a look at that. So here it is. Your financial institution has not allowed access to this card or account. Please take your card. Restricted access, everyone. That's how it can happen. Now, remember when we had the bushfires here in Australia and people didn't have any cash, so they were robbing petrol stations and convenience stores when the FPOS system fell down? What if your political opinions may not be, you know, perfectly aligned with mainstream. 
Perhaps it's best to have some emergency funds in cold hard cash, just in case you, I don't know, need to eat or have petrol in your vehicle. Here we go. This is from an MP. Brianne is a single mother from Chilwack working at a minimum wage job. She gave $50 to the convoy when it was 100% legal. And we saw that in the donations. 90 bucks, I think, was the average. She hasn't participated in any other way. Her bank account has now been frozen. This is who, who Justin Trudeau is actually targeting with his Emergency Act orders. Justin Trudeau, you know, one, one of the, the young leaders that, they're so, that Klaus is so proud of from the World Economic Forum. Minimum wage earning, single mother who donated $50 to a protest. What's going to happen? This is one thing that Rachel has been saying. People aren't going to donate anymore to anything because it could be used against them. It never goes away. And that's the real problem also with the cloud. Oh, oh no, sorry, with the crypto. Because it's all there. It never goes away. You link it to one person, you see every transaction where it's gone. I'm just waiting for people to start using NFTs to nefariously connect inappropriate material to someone for political gain. It's a nightmare. So let's keep going. Tom Mutton, a director at the Bank of England, said during a conference on Monday that programming could become a key feature of any future central bank digital currency in which the money would be programmed to be released only when something happened. You, you said you could introduce programmability. What happens if one of the participants in a transaction puts a restriction on future use of the money? That's exactly what could happen. I mean, right now, even, even now, your paper money can be deemed worthless, everyone, that you have. And this is the one advantage that the gold bugs and silver bugs have that that's real money okay it may I, i'm frustrated because it doesn't pay a bloody dividend but it is real solid pieces of metal no different to you know the steel i'm buying or the copper i tore out of my house and sold there's a there's value to it there's a use to it so there could be some social benef uh, socially beneficial outcomes from that, preventing activity which is seen to be socially harmful in some way. But at the same time, it could be a restriction on people's freedoms. There could be some socially beneficial outcomes, preventing activity which is seen to be socially harmful in some way. This is terrifying, the path we're trading. And I... I would bet you a carton that there would be Karens here in Australia and loopy lefties that would love to have this power over every single one of us. Okay, and don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating or encouraging people to piss your money away on stupid shit. I, I think, you know, people should be ridiculed for wasting their money on stupid stuff the old fashioned way. You know, if you're, and here's the problem we, you know, we come too far to often to the rescue for people who've, through their own stupidity, have wound up in a mess. Often you need to go through some tough times to realize and to learn a lesson and to be humbled by it, but we can't have that. No, 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 that, that, that's probably too mean or too harsh, Florian. Let's just develop a central bank digital currency and strip people of their bloody freedoms. How many generations will it take before this stuff gets ingrained in people's mind? And they think back, we're, we're just some old bloody ancient millennials who, had the, you know, who actually could spend money on shit that we wanted to. This is dangerous, everyone. This, this is why... The fact that the cash ban didn't get through is a small win, but this is much more terrifying than that. This is really dangerous. Just imagine if it's linked to a social credit. He warned that the government would be required to intervene and make the final decision. He said that it is a really delicate debate that needs to be had. It is not something we can settle ourselves. This is for the government to lead on. A digital currency could make payments faster, cheaper, and safer, but also opens up new technological possibilities, including programming. 
effectively allowing a party in a transaction such as a state or an employer to control how the money is spent by the recipient. An employer, could you imagine that? Sorry, you have to spend a certain amount of your money in our calls shop. We can't have you going to Woolies if you're a calls employee. One potential use could be to control uh, could be control over benefit payments, said Sandra Rowe, chief executive of the Global Blockchain Business Council. Yeah, that'll go down well. I mean, we already have that with that with that bloody Lendy card or whatever it's called. I mean, voluntarily. What do you? Here's the thing. What if you voluntarily wanted the state to program your money so you couldn't spend it at certain places? If people voluntarily opt into it, no problem at all. Let people choose. But you know that's not what's going to happen. We're not living in a country that thinks people can voluntarily choose to do the right thing. That that's that should be clear to all of us now. She compared a programmed digital currency to the U.S. system of paying benefits in vouchers, as it could have a similar goal of restricting the res- uh, of restricting the recipient to buying only essential, such as food, with the money. Earlier this month, Sir Joe Cunliffe, a deputy governor at the bank, said digital currencies could be programmed for commercial or social purposes, even down to the way children spend pocket money. That's terrifying. That's ingraining this. Here's the thing. The risk is that children see this as normal and they won't fight it. Two generations, everyone. Maybe even one. Because, I mean, it's going to be convenient. This is the problem. I never use cash. I hardly ever use cash. I actually had some cash in my wallet when I sold some copper. I had 300 bucks. Awesome. How long do you think it lasted in my wallet before all the girls in my house started, oh, Rachel, oh, I need this or this, this. Yeah, it evaporated bloody quick. In that regards, I prefer digital currency. Saving that up. Wanted to buy me a new Nintendo. Nintendo Watch, you know, the I know, a complete waste of money. and I, I'm probably smarter I didn't do it, but still, I could pretend I was going to buy it. He told Sky News, you can think of a smart contract in which the money will be programmed to be released only if something happened. You could think of giving your children pocket money, but programming the money so that it could only, couldn't be used for sweets. There's a whole range of things that money could do. Programmable money, which we can do with the current technology. Or you could kind of like be a parent explain to your children the problem of eating sweets and say, no, you're not allowed to spend that money on that. What if they defy you, Florian? Well, then that, that's the next right stage of parenting. Maybe that, you know, they eat so many sweets they feel sick. Or you show them the book of the big British smiles with all the teeth falling out. A Treasury spokesman said programmability is a potential feature of a central bank digital currency. The task force is coordinating the exploration of a potential CBDC, and no decisions have yet been taken on whether to introduce a CBDC in the UK or its design. There you go, everyone. And let's, I want to look at one more thing. Let me just bring up this other article. Let's have a quick look at this article because, well, everyone, it's already happening. China's digital yuan wallet now has 260 million individual users. One of the fastest growing apps in China right now by installs, it's the central bank's digital yuan wallet, 261 million individual users as opposed to enterprises. And one-fifth of the population have set up an eCNY wallet so far. And 87.5 billion yuan worth of transactions have been made using the digital fiat currency. Zhao Lan, head of financial markets at the People's Bank of China, said at a press event on Tuesday, Over the past two years, China has been piloting the use of the digital yuan in a number of major cities, including Xinjiang. People needed to enter a drawer and apply to be early users in the beginning. Then at the start of 2022, in a clear sign of of accelerating the trial, the People's Bank of China made the e-yuan wallet available on the iOS and Android stores in China. The digital yuan is by no means a manifestation of cryptocurrency, which is banned in China. The People's Bank of China has deemed Bitcoin and the likes highly volatile, speculative, and lacking intrinsic value, and pointed out that cryptocurrencies could be an instrument of money laundering. The 
Eon aspires to achieve different results. Issued by the central bank, it serves as the statutory digital version of China's cash in circulation, or MO. Indeed, the regulator intends to make Eon payments work even without the internet using NFC technology. According to a research paper published by the Working Group on e- EUAN, we'll call it, Research and Development at the Central Bank last year, the Digital Yuan aims to diversify the forms of cash provided to the public by the Central Bank, satisfy the public's demand for digital cash, and support financial inclusion. So fair competition, efficiency, and safety of retail payment services and echo the international initiative and exploration explore the improvement of cross-border payments. Though the e-yuan wallet is now downloadable in the Chinese app store, only users in a list of pilot cities and at the Winter Olympics venues can actually sign up, top up their accounts and spend the virtual currency at one of the 8 million pilot scenarios, such as making purchases on Alibaba and paying DD rides. To exchange cash into e-yuan, users will have to move money from one of the commercial banks authorized by the People's Bank of China to operate and circulate the digital currency, including digital-only banks like Tencent-backed WeBank and Ant-backed MyBank. In terms of its relationship with China's popular payment services, the People's Bank of China said in its report that the EU yuan is supposed to complement rather than replace WeChat Pay and Alipay. For instance, It could support anonymity for small value transactions, just like physical cash. In other cases, large amounts of funds sent from a provincial government to a town could be paid in e-yuan to prevent corruption using digital currencies' traceable capabilities. At the end of the day, though, e-yuan still needs to compete with private payments giants on user experience if it wants to achieve meaningful active user base. So, you can see... It's already happening in China. Let's let's have a talk about this, guys. Got to have a shot of my Stein here. So, this can come with potential benefits, or it could be potentially very dangerous to use. I can see Trudeau would have loved to have this right now. The Emergency Powers Act, boom. Everyone even remotely related to it. Not just their bank accounts, but all the money they have frozen instantly. All their family members, money frozen. Maybe you just freeze everyone in all the streets. Geolock it. It's dangerous. I don't know if we'll be able to stop it, but we need to inform our politicians and our bureaucrats of our concerns and we need to insist and ensure and fight that we can still have the failsafe of real physical cash no matter what they say because it'll come again there'll be another push for a cash ban and another push for a cash ban it'll be ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars one thousand dollars we can't let that happen what do you think Thanks for watching, everyone. If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I've put together here, there are a few ways you can help out. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says. We've got our own pocket squares there. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll point you to an earlier video I did about the digital yuan. We've been talking and worrying and warning about this for some time. What do you think? You think we'll see a digital central bank digital currency? And are you worried about it? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time.